Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If this setup looks familiar, if you've watched my last video, it's because I just recorded it. <laughs> I'm doing a bunch of recording today, so if I look pretty similar to what I looked like in the last video, that's why, that's what YouTubers do. We bulk record and we bulk edit. <laughs> At least I'm trying to be on top of it this year. Also, if you haven't noticed and you've been around here for a while, I am now uploading videos every Friday on my channel. So new videos every Friday. It's a little change I'm doing this year. I'm gonna do one video a week. I think it's a lot more manageable since I started my new channel, Nicole's Clean Kitchen. If you like cooking, be sure to go check out that channel. I started a new channel this year, well, last year. Um, and it's not that it's hard, it's just more time consuming. So I upload on that channel every Saturday morning. So you'll get a video Friday and Saturday if you're, vis if you're subscribed to that channel. Anyway, moving on. Today we're gonna do a Q&A. <laughs> I figure I'm upstairs, I'm not by my plants. It's a good time to just sit down and do a QA and a because I don't need my plants by me for this, you know? Just gonna sit down and chat. And I also thought it would be nice to kind of have this video in the new year, close to the new year. We're two weeks in already. So I figured it'd be nice to have this, you know, closer to the new year. So if you are new to my channel, and you just found me, you can learn a little th few things about me, if you care. <laughs> I asked a bunch of people on Instagram to just leave me some questions in a little question box a few weeks ago, and people are probably like, are you ever gonna get to those questions? Well, here we are, <laughs> months later. Question number one, how many plants do you have? And I actually counted specifically for this question. I have 97 plants. And that's actually a little bit less than what I normally have. Um, I'm usually over a hundred, but you win some, you lose some. And I lost some last year. I lost some because we moved in the middle of last year. And uh, it's just, it is what it is. 97 plants is a lot of plants, okay? And that's not including what my daughter has in her room. So <laughs> I'm making a face because I'm strongly considering downsizing my collection even more this year. And we could talk about that later. Anyway, next question, where did you get your dogs? Are they rescues? So our dogs, Jazzy and Prime, they are, we didn't get them from a rescue place. Um, we actually feel like we rescued them though, because we got them, oh, Jazzy is gonna be nine in April, I think. So it's a long time ago and it was back when Craigslist was popular and I feel like we rescued them because we got Prime from this house. We picked them up in a garage and these kids came out with all these puppies and we're like, not kids, probably like teenagers, but we were like, what is going on? Is this like some backdoor selling puppies thing? Um, it wasn't a lot of money. It was barely any money, but we feel like we rescued them both. Jazzy we got from another owner who just couldn't have them because, couldn't have her because they just had a baby and they just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the situation was, but we um love them so much. <laughs> Jazzy's gonna be nine in April and Prime just turned eight in December. It makes me sad to say that because I feel like they don't have a lot of time left because they're full bred pits. Well, Prime we think might be part boxer, but still, <laughs> I don't want them to go anywhere. Why can't pets live forever, you know? I can go on and on about that, but we won't. How long have you been married? We will be married nine years next, not next, we are in 2022, Nicole, Jesus. It's gonna be nine years this July, 10 years together this July. So it's been a debate between the two of us, so not, not really a debate, but like a question of whether or not we take the trip, like the good trip on our 10 years together. We got married on our one year anniversary of dating. Um, or if we take it 10 years married. I think we should do 10 years married, but I also think we should go somewhere small this year 
just to celebrate 10 years of being together. 10 years with the same person, that's an accomplishment. That's a long time, a really long time. Okay, what did you do before photography and do you enjoy weddings? Okay, how much time do we have? <laughs> just kidding. I actually didn't have a lot of jobs before um, like getting set in my career. I really didn't. I worked for Edward Fox Wedding Photography Studios, which is funny because at that time I, I was 15 and I didn't have any desire to do photography. I worked there when they had these, the, the proofs like that you would get, you know, you get proofs from your wedding day and they were in these books, like they were already printed. And how I would edit is I would rip the page out of the book and be like, this picture's trash. It was crazy to think like back almost 20 years ago, over 20 years ago. Oh my God, I'm 38. <laughs> over 20 years ago, how photos were presented to couples. And then I um, worked there for a little bit during high school. And then I also worked for State Farm for just like a small franchised State Farm for just a little bit. Those were like high school jobs. And then after high school, I started working for Export Fitness, which they're all over the place. I think that they're all over the United States. Maybe they're just in Illinois. No, I think they're all over the United States. I don't know. But I started working for them and uh, when I was in college. And then um, I was there for like five years. And then I left that job because <laughs> it was very toxic. And then I went to old tanning salons, which I think that those are just Illinois based. Another toxic environment, tanning salons. <laughs> I was a district manager and I got pregnant, so I demoted myself. And ever since then, they were just like trying to push me out the door, trying to push me out the door. And I couldn't bend down to clean the beds anymore because I had like horrible sciatic pain and they let me go. Not because of that. They conjured up something else and I sued them. I didn't win because I had a horrible lawyer, which the case didn't even really go to court. Um, it was, oh God, I had a horrible lawyer. But I collected unemployment for quite some time, so whatever, karma, you know? But it was just awful. Like the, the worst sexual misconduct environment you could imagine uh, working for that company. Anyway, maybe I won't put the name of the company on here because that would be kind of bad whatever don't go work for a tanning salon and if you do i'm sorry if you have you know what i'm talking about okay so then i worked there for like five years and then i had my daughter and i was like i don't i i, I can't imagine going back to work and having to leave her in daycare so i started my own daycare <laughs> yeah i did that for like eight years and then i um then I was like, you know what? I can't, I can't stay home with kids anymore. It's driving me nuts. I need to get out into the world. My husband bought me my first camera and I was like, okay, I'm gonna make this a business. So I started like photographing um, families that I watched their kids. I would photograph their families. And then I got a couple weddings for super cheap, you know, low pricing. And then I built my portfolio and here we are. Eight years later, eight years, nine years. Wow. Um, I started it as just like a hobby. Like I wasn't going to go full force, but then I, I did. Cause I was like, I can't do this anymore with staying at home with kids. I was done. Plus I kind of only started it because, you know, Mia was a baby. So she was in school now, you know? Anyway, that's my uh, past. <laughs> And do I like weddings? I love weddings. I still really do. You know, they have their ups and downs as all careers do, but typically the ups and downs come before the wedding day in email correspondence. Like some, it's really hard. Like if you're not talking to your clients on the phone a lot, it's hard to grasp their personalities, how the day is gonna go, whether they're type A or not. <laughs> Um, you gain this perspective that may not necessarily be true because there's been plenty of times where I was kind of dreading a wedding just based on the email correspondence and so much back and forth. And then I get there and I'm like, oh my gosh, these, 
this couple is amazing. And that's usually the case. Like I have great clients. I can count on my hands the number of weddings that were awful and it's not even five, like maybe two weddings. Um, and when I say awful, hardly awful, like still great communication with the bride and groom. It's usually something else. It's usually like a parent of the bride and groom or someone in the wedding party or a venue that was just unbearable to work with, you know? So it's usually not the couple. And that's what I love. I, that's what I love about weddings because honestly, it's the happiest day of somebody's life up to that point. And even if you're having a bad day, even if you're in a really bad mood and you spent all morning crying or angry or you're arguing with your spouse or your kids, you have to go to the wedding and smile and be happy. And you know, it's, it's something that automatically gets you into a better mood. And I can't say that about other jobs that I've had. So I love it. I, I really do. How did you start a podcast? Oh, hmm. Uh, I got two of my close friends to do it with me. <laughs> That's how I started it. We, me, Adam and Becca have a podcast called Pot It Together, if you didn't know. They also have YouTube channels, which I'll link below. Um, <laughs> we, we became close friends and then we just talked about how we should have a podcast because every time we got together or we were on the phone or we were voice chatting, it was just, it was fun. And it, we talk about plants all the time, but we also talk about other things. And we were like, you know, we should just really record our conversations and make a podcast. <laughs> and that's what we did. I mean, obviously we follow more instruction and we have like you know episodes and specific topics we talk about but it really truly is a friendship documented that's what it is it's so much fun if you uh if you aren't listening to the podcast and you're looking for a new podcast to listen to be sure to go check us out it's fun okay we're in our fourth season fourth season Ooh. This is where I record the podcast. So I have my notes here. Yeah, season four. Shit. Where did my pen go? Mm, that'll be a problem later. We're recording today. Actually, in a more detailed answer of how we started the podcast, I'm not sure if you're looking for like a technical, how did you start? But if I'm being honest, um, Becca, I think Becca was the one who kind of really got us on to, oh no, actually Adam did too. I didn't do it. I didn't really know the back end of doing a podcast. Um, I think Becca did a podcast for her old job, so she kind of knew a little bit of the ins and outs, but I'm not the person to ask, honestly, because I don't really know the technical things behind it. And Adam edits the videos, so he's the one that uploads on, you know, to all the platforms every week. So I just, I don't know. If they were to leave tomorrow and to say that they didn't want to do this anymore, I'd be asking people the same questions. <laughs> Honestly, what is your fav favorite and least favorite thing about being on YouTube? My favorite thing is the relationships that it builds, honestly, and like communicating with, with everyone. This platform is amazing. It really is amazing. I didn't even watch YouTube really before I started my, my channel. My husband did a lot. He used it for like figuring things out and like watching tutorials on how to do XYZ, whatever, and he'd always just be like, just just look up a YouTube video, just look up a YouTube video. I'm like, what is this YouTube thing? Like, I don't like YouTube. Then I started watching it and I got into plants. So I started following a bunch of planty people and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so informative, so cool. It kind of gives a glimpse into people's lives and like how they're doing with their plant collections and I fell in love with it. So. It's really the relationships because when I watched those videos, when I first started, I felt like I knew these people. I was like, oh, I could be friends with you, you know? So that's what I love. What I hate about it, oh, trolls. What's a troll? People that leave nasty comments for no reason, or maybe there is a reason, but they're just miserable beings and they're just you know sitting behind their computer and just type of that i hate that i hate that there's really no control over that i feel like you know you can put blocked words 
in your settings like when you're posting so like people can't say certain things without it getting blocked but like you never know what someone's gonna say and people can be very condescending and people can be assholes without saying those specific words <laughs> so i feel like youtube just kind of has to get better at that but like how do you really monitor it you know it's a public forum freedom of speech i love constructive criticism but there's a fine line you know fine line so it is what it is you know like I, I can take it I feel like over the past three years I'm, I'm actually tomorrow is my three-year anniversary on YouTube <gasps> how fun and I'm actually working a wedding <laughs> it's my first wedding back after vacation but that's fun um anyway you know after three years it's really not as bad it could be worse it's not it's not that bad i went live last friday which as i'm recording this i haven't gone live yet and i'm kind of dreading people like coming into my comments while i'm live i don't like that it distracts people from watching the live video and i haven't gone live in like a year so i'm excited about it but i'm also like oh who's gonna be there you know but you know, it's fun. It's it's a lot of fun. It's There's definitely more pros than there is cons. And I would say do it. If you're looking to start a YouTube channel, I would say just do it. Because I would never have thought that I'd have over 11,000 people watching my, my YouTube videos every week. It still kind of blows my mind, you know? I know it's not a ton of people, but it is a ton of people. A lot of people will you ever move out of illinois i live in illinois i used to live in the city chicago now i'm in the suburbs but i'm close enough to the city some friends would laugh at that and be like nicole you're still in the city <laughs> which i kind of am um i'm like 30 no like 40 minutes from the actual city but i don't know i think that i would move out of illinois i don't have any plan to right now like in place but my husband's from New York and literally for the past nine years since we've been together, he's been talking about going back to New York. So I feel like I would be doing him and myself really an injustice by staying here um, forever because I should experience a different part of the United States, living in a different part of the United States. But as of right now, we're trying to save money to eventually buy a house. So that's why we live with my mom and my stepdad. I mean, obviously we're paying rent, but this is this is their house. So we, we have plans, hopefully in the next four to five years, once the kids are like in college <laughs> and like out of the house to, um, to move, to possibly move. And maybe not New York, but we're thinking maybe Jersey, which is close to his mom. And you know, that's God willing. That's if everybody's still around. Like who knows what's gonna happen in four to five years. You know, it's just a scary thing. <sighs> but the plan is to not stay here forever. Favorite plant at the moment. Oh, hmm. Let me show you what my favorite plant at the moment is. I took this little snippet video this morning actually, because I had plants in a grow box. And one of the plants that I had in the grow box was my Gloriosum because it died. I received it on, let's see, I have it here, October 18th of 2021, so just a few months ago. And the leaf turned very yellow, very brown, very shortly after I received it. I was upset to say the least, um, but it had a growth point. It had a little growth point on it. So I stuck it in some sphagnum moss, put it in a grow box. And my grow box is literally just like a clear plastic container shoe box thing with a lid. Gave it some water, left it in there. I forgot about it for two months. And this is what happened a huge brand new leaf. This isn't a small leaf. This is a huge leaf. I am so excited. I'm excited that I have something to be excited about. You know what I mean? Like it's it's been a long winter so far and winter just started. God. Um, and I feel like we all get this way with our plants at this time of the year. It's just a hard time for people that live in places that actually have winter. 
you know, plants just don't do very well. And I was very excited to see that, very excited. So currently my Gloriosum is my favorite plant. <laughs> that could change. Will you be going to, oh, you, will you be doing a garden this spring? I think that we're gonna do something very small. I do wanna plant some more wildflowers that are perennials that'll just keep coming back year after year so I don't have to like do a lot. <laughs> I'm so excited for spring though. I never thought I would say that because I really do like winter. It just reminds me of this time that's just a slower time. It forces us to slow down because we can't really be outside and I, I'm off of work. It's like my break time from photography and it's just like, you know, just relaxing. And I, I like that time and winter is that time for me. Um, but I'm excited for spring for this garden because it's our first spring in the new house and I'm excited to see what comes up. I'm excited to see everything like bloom. My parents moved in in May of 2021. We moved in in July of 2021 or June, I'm sorry, June 2021. And technically that is still spring, but we didn't really get to see the leaves turn, the, the bushes come in. Um, we didn't get to see all of that. so. It had already done it by the time we moved in. So really excited about that. But I think we're gonna be doing tomato plants because my stepdad, Ted, he loves tomatoes and my mom likes tomatoes too. So I think she's gonna plant two tomato plants in that big garden we had in our yard. I think we're gonna minimize it and we're gonna extend the dog area because the dogs just don't have enough space to go to the bathroom and we don't want them going all over the yard because then it like burns the grass and it's hard to see where they went. And then you're walking all over the yard looking for landmines, you know? So we have plants, I'll record it. <laughs> what plant shops will you be visiting this year? I live in Illinois and would love some recos. Okay, so actually I'm really excited, but by the time you're watching this, I had I would have already went there. So I may have posted something on Instagram, but I'm gonna be going to Cultured Roots this Sunday from when I'm recording this. Uh, I'm really excited about doing a plant tour there, but I have a list of places. Let me pull it up. Cultured Roots in Libertyville, the Peggy Notebart Museum, which is funny because I shot a wedding there oh, like four years ago and I plant blindness. I didn't see any plants. Like I didn't know that it had a lot of plants. So now I have to go back there and it's gonna be kind of cool to go back there and, and see it and be like, how did I not see this? <laughs> um, Sunnyside Plants in the city. Sunnyside Plants is owned by a woman who pretty much left her corporate job in 2020 after the pandemic. She started selling plants on her front porch. She lived on Sunnyside. So I'm assuming that's why uh, she named it Sunnyside Plants. And I remember finding her on Offer Up, I think, or maybe it was Facebook, I can't remember. And I went to her house and I purchased some plants and I had a brief conversation with her and I remember all of this. And then I heard that she had opened this shop in the city, like literally two blocks from where I used to live. And it's huge, it's really big. And I was just thinking like, oh my, good for her because she was so worried about it. She was worried about the future and, leaving her corporate job and like, I got all this out of this brief 10 minute conversation with her. And uh, I was just really happy for her, even not knowing who she was. So I'm excited to go there. I think I might reach out to her through DM and see, but I'm excited to go there. Grow Geneva. <sighs> Man, so many of you told me about this place. Geneva's not that close to me, but I think it'd be worth the drive. A few of these are pretty far. Um, Wold House Farms, Sunrise Greenhouse. That's a little far, I think it's like an hour. Plant Salon Chicago, that's in the city. So I think I might do that like one day during the week after I drop Mia off from school. Mia off at school. Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry, Dr. Pepper. <laughs> um, Chalet Nursery and Garden Center. Schaefer Greenhouse, that's in Montgomery. That's kind of, that's kind of far. It's like an hour and a half for me. Um, Branch Gardens in Aurora, heard about that place. The Sacred Succulent in Bolingbrook and Plant House in Waukegan. That's 12 places. So hopefully I get to visit all of them this year. 
I mean, that would be that would be fun, you know, if I if I got to see all of those, which is that's a, that's easily doable if I go during the week, you know. Okay, let me know if you've been to any one of those places I mentioned. I'm curious. Uh, any plans with Adam and Becca this year? Oh, you guys, yes. Yes, I'm gonna say yes. We don't have any plans right now, but I'm gonna say yes. Becca was supposed to come to Chicago in October or November of last year, but her schedule was so crazy. Um, so we kind of scratched that. So hopefully she can come in the spring. But if not, I'm really thinking of going back and visiting her. She doesn't know this yet. <laughs> well, now she does if she's watching this. But yeah, I mean, definitely, we'll, we'll definitely have to get together. We've gotten together every year since 2019, since we started. So I can't see this year being any different. I mean, priorities, you know? It's funny because with the podcast, we have a website and um, she just finished working on the website actually. We just launched it, which is really exciting. <laughs> And me and Becca, we both cut all of our hair off pretty much. Like a lot of it, we donated it. And the last photo shoot that we had together, all three of us was in Missouri and we had our long hair and now it's like false advertisement. It's like, we have to we have to have another photo shoot. So, <laughs> so we have to make that happen. If we're gonna get together, it's for nothing other than to have another photo shoot. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's always a good time with them and I would absolutely love visiting them. I actually want to get back to Arizona. Really want to get back there because I haven't been there since March of last year. <sighs> Can't believe it's been almost a year. Okay. Will you be coming to New York anytime soon? I know you have fam there and would love to meet you. Oh. Um... Okay. If I don't go to New York this year, I am a horrible person. Just going to say it. I'm going to say it. You guys can hold me to it. I'm gonna say it because I have not seen my mother-in-law in since 2019. Because <sighs> my sister-in-law was pregnant with her first kid. Oh my gosh. My sister-in-law visited us. So that's a good thing. I was able to meet, you know, our nephew and all that. But she recently had another baby last October and I haven't seen him. And I have not seen my mother-in-law because she hasn't come here either. She doesn't fly frequently. So it's like, I got to get to New York. So you know who you are if you're watching this. I'll let you know. I'll post it on my Instagram if I'm going to New York. There's other people I want to see in New York. So I have to get there. 13, have you had COVID yet? <laughs> it's a random question, but no, I haven't. However, I will say that... I'm literally shocked, and I'm knocking on all the wood here because I clearly don't want to cont cont contract COVID. I'm fully vaccinated, fully boosted, the whole house is. But I will say that me, my husband, my kids, none of us have had COVID, knock on wood. How is that possible? How is it possible that we've dodged this large bullet, this atomic bomb per se, for two years? I work in weddings. I'm around hundreds of people a weekend. New people, people I don't know, people I've never seen, people that are traveling. How have I dodged this bullet? I'm safe. I wear a mask. I wash my hands. But come on. Maybe I'm asymptomatic. Maybe I have had it and I'm asymptomatic. And maybe it's the same thing with my whole family. I don't know. But on paper, I have not had COVID yet. <laughs> What Instagram people have you been into lately? Oh, okay. I don't know if you meant planty Instagram people or just people in general, but I'll tell you who the people are in my story feed because that'll tell you like who I watch stories of the most. And I could already tell you that three of them are not plant people. <laughs> Brittany Boren Leach. I love her. She's just a Instagram influencer, mom, day in the life. I love watching stuff like that. People with little kids, I don't know why. Tori Stender, she just had a baby. I just love her feed because she's also really great at photography and she's like a homemaker, I would say. And I just, I love her feed. I did a video with her a couple years ago. Aspen Ovard, another influencer. 
she just had another baby and I love her aesthetic. Happy little bush, locks, my favorite human. They're into plants. So there's my plant person. It's Pamela. She's on the top of my list. We all know it's Pamela, right? I just did a video with her recently too. And then Kaylee Basso, I think I'm saying your name right. She just opened up a used bookstore online. She's also a plant person, but I just think that she's so cute. I love her story. She's freaking hilarious. And oh, Scott grows an avocado tree. He's at the top of my list and he's a plant guy. In Australia, that's a horrible accent, wow. And those are the top, my top people. So there you go, that's what it is. Is it hard having two YouTube channels? Mm. I would say, I don't know if I mentioned it in this video, but I do have another YouTube channel called Nicole's Clean Kitchen. If you're not already following it, be sure to go follow it. I cook. Um, I post over there every Saturday and I post on this channel every Friday. Excuse me. Um, I wouldn't say it's hard. I would say it's just more work. That's not necessarily hard. It's just more time consuming. Yeah, we'll go with that. And then the last question is my biggest goal for 2022. I would say if I had to pick one word, it would be consistency. You didn't ask me to pick one word, but that's what I'm doing. To be more consistent in 2022. 2021 kind of flew off the rails in every sense of the word. We had a lot going on, even though it may not have seemed like it. I keep a lot of my private life private. <laughs> and we had stuff going on on the back end and um, we moved and it just a lot of adjusting. It was a lot harder to film YouTube videos, but I wanna be more consistent this year, which is why I'm posting every Friday instead of like every Monday and Wednesday. I think it's gonna be a little bit easier for me to maintain consistency that way. You know, set realistic goals for yourself. And maybe to stop drinking Diet Dr. Pepper. Maybe. Okay guys, that's it. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video. Again, if you like it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already, please. Just hit that subscribe button. Check to see if you are subscribed because a few of my subscribers emailed me or DM'd me um, and said, I swore I was subscribed and I wasn't. I feel like YouTube does this thing where they clean shit up every year and they're like, oh, this person hasn't watched your videos in a while or this person hasn't been on YouTube in a while. We're just gonna unfollow, unsubscribe you. Cause that's happened to me. Like I was subscribed to some people and then I wasn't seeing their their videos, so I had to like look, search them up to see their videos. And I saw I wasn't subscribed and I was like, I know damn well I was subscribed to your channel. So I don't know, I don't know, check it, check it out, okay? Okay guys, I will see you guys next Friday. Bye! I like this light. I might film in here more often.